Hey everybody, and welcome to this week's Vaden webinar. With me, I have a special guest, Simon Martinelli. So if you've ever been active in the Vaden or Juke communities, you may have seen Simon around before. And he's joining us today to talk about Juke. Welcome, Simon. Hi, Marcus. So uh, yesterday I was putting together these slides and I was looking up your uh, your title on LinkedIn and it was Software Renovator. I really like that. Can you give a couple of <laughs> sentences of how you ended up with a title like Software Renovator? What do you do? Yeah, I'm working as a freelance consultant in Switzerland. And most of the time I'm taking care of existing applications. So I do software modernization projects where uh, we, for example, uh, migrate an application from Oracle Forms to Vadin. And uh, in that time, so that was around four years ago now, I started to use Vadin. And uh, this gave me like uh, the idea of having the title of a software innovator. Yeah, no, I like, I really love it because it just really kind of tells what you what you do so well. All right, so um, just a couple of quick kind of notices before we get started. So we'll have everyone muted during the webinar, but you are able to ask questions using the questions uh, functionality that you find in the questions panel. So go ahead and ask your questions there and we'll either answer them as we're coding or then at the end, depending on the type of question it is. And we'll send it in the link to the slides and the recording after this fact. So if you are joining the webinar more from the Juke community or outside of both communities, and I wanted to give you a quick introduction to what it is that uh, Vaden does. So we are also kind of in the software renovation business in a sense. So we help uh, folks build and modernize Java-based applications. And we have two different frameworks that help folks do that. So Vonflow, which we'll be working with today, is a way a pretty unique framework that allows you to build web applications fully in Java. And we have another framework that combines the Spring Boot backend with a Reactor type script uh, lit front end. And both of them give kind of this full end-to-end -end type safe development environment. All right, so before we get started or we release Simon and his ID on code, we will do a couple of polls here just to kind of get to know our audience. So. Let's run a couple of polls here just to understand what type of technological background you are coming from. So in your uh, screen down at the bottom, you should see a polls uh, selector. So go ahead and uh, select which databases you're using right now, what persistence frameworks you're using, and how you're currently handling database migrations. So you should hopefully see those there. And let's see what, what the answers are looking like. So when it comes to databases, we see Postgres in a pretty convincing lead with MySQL and MariaDB coming up second. So I guess combining those, they would be pretty much in, in line with Postgres. And on the persistence framework level, we have JPA and Hibernate with a convincing over half lead here with Spring Data coming up in second place. So I think, Simon, this sounds like a good good group of people for you to uh, enlighten with Juke. We, we do have seven people here on the stream using Juke from before, but most of them are not using Juke currently. So I think that's a good place for you to do some introductions to this new framework. And also most are not using any database migrations right now. Those who are, are primarily using Liquibase with a very close second of Flyway and kind of sprinkling of other frameworks in there as well. Very good. So uh, Simon, I think that sounds like a good place for you to come in and enlighten us on what Juke is and how we can use it for effective building these kind of data heavy applications that we all like to build. Okay, thank you. So let's start by sh sharing my screen. Here all right, we, are. we can see it. 
Yeah, great. So I will talk about uh, track and field today, not only about Juke. Uh, why do I talk about track and field? Because I'm in a sports club in Switzerland for already a very long time since I'm a kid and I was doing um, kind of track and field competitions. And uh, this uh, led me to the idea that I could create software to manage track and field events because uh, we have some uh, events for kids that we manage. And uh, I built the software first in 1997 with uh, access later on i was using java with eclipse rcp and finally i migrated it to vadin and that's what i like to show you today because this is a typical data heavy application where you have a lot of data to enter and uh, to display uh, as well so before we have a look at the data model and the application let's talk about juke juke uh, is a library that helps you to write type safe uh, SQL and it consists of two parts. So first you have uh, what's on the bottom, a Juke generator. The Juke generator takes the database and generate Java classes that you later on can use to build your SQL statements. So like you may know from uh, JPA in Hibernate that you have the JPA model gen uh, dependency that you can add and then uh, Hibernate will generate uh, a, date, a meta model from your Hibernate mappings, and that's more or less the same that uh, Juke does. So it generates for every object in the database, it generates a class. Uh, the great thing about that is not only that you will have uh, a type safe model that you can use in generating the SQL statements, but for example, if you have older applications, you may have store procedures and functions in the database. And if you have to try to use this with Hibernate or with Spring Data JDBC, you know that's not that easy. Here it's much easier because Juke will generate a class that represents your store procedure and you can uh, instantiate this class and call it and it will uh, call the state store procedure behind the scene. I will not show that today because I don't have a data model that uh, uses uh, store procedures to show that. Uh, but just to give you an idea. And on top, you have the second part of Juke, that's the domain-specific language. So the Juke domain-specific language is SQL. But in contrast to Spring Data JDBC, where you write your SQL statements in strings, you have uh, Java DSL and you have, uh, based on the DSL, a validation that your SQL statement uh, will be valid. That's uh, the point. So before we dig into uh, the application code, I like to explain uh, the data model of the application. So first, uh, we have a look at how the application looks like. So this is my application. It's called uh, JTAF, uh, that stands for J Track and Field. And here on the dashboard, we see uh, all the events. So Jugendmeisterschaft means uh, uh, competition for EOS in for kids that we have. We have like uh, the CIS, that's a special event uh, with some uh, sports club from the French speaking part and the German speaking part where we come together. And here you can have uh, or have a look at uh, the ranking lists, for example, uh, that uh, will be generated after you have entered the data. So to, understand, to better understand uh, the data model, let's have a look at it. So the table on top that we have is called organization. That's this uh, organization that organizes the event. And then we have uh, some data in it. You can uh, create series. That means you can have multiple competitions that uh, will result uh, under one a series ranking list at the end. Maybe you know Diamond League, that's very popular in Europe, uh, wherein there are competitions like in Paris and Zurich, in Lausanne and in other cities. And at the end of, uh, of this series, there will be a prize for the best uh, athlete uh, in its uh, category, for example. Then we have clubs and athletes. and. Uh, the athlete will 
be uh, added to a category. A category depends on on uh, on the age, for example. In my uh, case, when we have kids, or if you look at uh, at like the Diamond League, you have a category like 100 meter uh, sprint, for example, or uh, uh, other disciplines that you can can do. And uh, then we will have results. And finally, the event is uh, the single uh, event that you do. So like uh, 100 meter or long jump or shot put or whatever you like to do. So that's the model. And now let's have a look how this looks in a simple example. So I created the GitHub repo. You will be provided with the slides uh, for sure. And there we will you will find a link uh, to the GitHub repo. And in this repo, uh, I have created a Spring Boot application. Uh, by the way, it just a Spring Boot application for convenience. So Chook is not related to any framework. So Chook is just a Java library. You can use it with Spring Boot, with Quarkus, with Elidion, whatever framework you like to use, or even without the framework, just with JDBC and Chook. But here I use uh, Spring Boot because this has out the configuration for database connection. And for uh, the database migration, I use Flyway DB. So this is a regular Spring Boot uh, application with uh, Spring Boot parent. And it uses also Spring Boot starter Chook. Uh, this one has some auto configuration and generates um, the Chook um, environment for you. So Chook will use the connection. Chook will also use uh, transactions if you have any. And so Chook is integrated with, with Spring here. Um, the first thing that we have seen is this generator. And the generator can be run um, in different ways. One way could be you want to run it with Maven or with Gradle. Uh, there are plugins for both of them. And the plugin you have to configure. It's uh, the Chook CodeGen Maven plugin. The, by the way, the Chook version comes from Spring Dependency Management. So we will use the same version as we do uh, when we run uh, the application. Then we have uh, the execution. It will run in the generate uh, source uh, phase. And then we have to define the database. Now, there are various databases that are supported by Chook. Uh, if you use a um, open source database like uh, Postgres, MariaDB, um, then Chook is free. But if you use a commercial database like Oracle or Microsoft SQL Server, then uh, Chook is not free. So Chook has a dual licensing model. And then you have uh, to pay a subscription uh, to get access to um, the database that you uh, may want to use. Why is this important? The point is Chook is database agnostic. That means Chook runs or the code that you write is not dependent on the database. And even if you use functionality that is not existing in the database, uh, Chook will try to emulate this functionality, for example. So you can write portable database code using uh, Chook. So it doesn't matter if you change uh, the database. For sure, if you use database specific functionality like stored procedures, as I mentioned earlier, then you may have a problem that may not work. But if you're just using standard SQL, your uh, application will run on any database. So that's the same as you have if you use uh, JPA Hibernate or, or Eclipse Link, for example. Here in that case, uh, just to, to have a different uh, use case, as I will show you in my application, here we use uh, something called DDL database. That means that's not really a database. Chook will take uh, the scripts. And in that case, it's Flyway. Uh, so I prefer Flyway because usually I do uh, just SQL statements for migrations. Uh, but you could also use Likibase. It doesn't matter. Even for Likibase, there is a special DDL database that you can use because with SQL, uh, with uh, Likibase, you don't need SQL. You could also have it uh, with uh, XML, for example. So we have some configuration. We can sort it by flyway. That means uh, it will be uh, used or it will use the same order as if you execute flyway. Then we can have a target. So we say generate uh, 
the code uh, in this package. And uh, then we have a dependency to the Druk meta extension that is used for the generation, that's all. And if we run that, Druk will, uh, we can have a look how it looks if I do a compile. Then we see that the, the main plugin uh, is run and we see that Druk is uh, inspecting the database. We have uh, various options, by the way, um, you can generate just the code that we will see later on, but you can also generate the data access object, so kind of a repository for each database table. Um, you could also generate bean validation annotations if you like to, um, or there are other uh, things like uh, pochos that you can generate, but we just do the standard generation here. Uh, but if you have a look at the documentation of Juke, you will find uh, a wide variety of possibilities uh, that you could generate. So after that is run, you will find uh, code under generated sources Juke. And before we have a look at that, we may inspect the DB migration script from um, Flyway. And here we see a regular SQL script. So we create sequence, we create a table um, or various table, various sequences based on the database model that I've shown you uh, just before. And now if we have a look, we have like the athlete table with the first name, last name, gender, uh, the year of birth, and then we have some foreign keys to a club and the organization. And this will uh, be represented here. So we have uh, for every table, we have a class. So let's have a look at this athlete class here. And this athlete class uh, extends some Juke uh, classes, but what's important, you have uh, constants for the table itself and you have constants for each uh, column. And in the column, you not only have the name, but you also have the type. So that means uh, Chook will be type safe. We will see that uh, when, when uh, having a look at the queries. Based on this meta model, Chook can decide, oh, okay, this must be a long, this must be a string, and then you have type safe code. And uh, finally, we also have some additional data. So down here, we will uh, see which one is the primary key, for example. And if you create something like a dynamic UI, so you could go ahead and create like a master data uh, management uh, tool. And this could be more or less generated based on the metadata because you know the, the names, you know the types. So this would be uh, quite easy to generate something like that. That's what first will be generated. And the second uh, that is generated by default are records. Um, records in Chook are uh, in special in that uh, regards that they may extend from updatable record. And updatable record means uh, you can use the record to read the data, first of all, but you can also use it to save it. So it's implementing kind of an active record pattern. That means I can create a record and I uh, set the fields of the record. So I will have setters and getters for all database columns. And finally, I can call a store on the record and this will save um, the data to the database. But we will see that later on. If your database table does not have a unique or a primary key, then you will not be able to use that. So you will not have um, an updatable record. You have a read-only record. Additionally, Chook also know concepts like uh, optimistic locking. So like you have from, if you use JPA Hibernate and you have a version field, you can also define uh, how Chook should, be, should behave. If you don't uh, define anything and you want to use optimistic locking, Chook will use, use all uh, fields in the where clause to check if the record uh, didn't change uh, from the reading. So that's what will be generated. And finally, uh, let's have a look at, at the test. I created um, a class, just one, a Juke test, 
where we can see how we can use uh, Joke uh, for querying and for, for writing data. So this is a standard uh, Spring Boot test. Here we have the transaction annotation. That means every uh, test method will do a rollback at the end. That's because I don't want to change the data. By the way, I'm using H2 just for demo purposes. That's because this is the easiest setup. You don't need anything. That's why I've uh, chosen H2 as a database. I wouldn't do that anymore. You may know about the project. It's called uh, Test Containers. And usually I use uh, test containers for testing, even for generating a uh, database model or the database classes with Juke. I will show that in my application because the setup there uh, does exactly that. But we want to do, have a short introduction and that's why I'm uh, using H2. So what I can uh, all the way here from Juke is this DSL context. So that's the domain specific language uh, class that I use for SQL building. And the first test that I have here is a very simple one. I want to uh, find all competitions and then I can even use a shortcut. So I have select from competition. Uh, that's a shortcut from for select star from competition more or less. And here, if I don't tell Chuk what I want to have in return, it will give me uh, the record. So this one uh, will uh, return a list. So result is a Chuk type, it's implementing list, and uh, it will return a list of records. Here I just have one. That's what I'm uh, selecting. And let's run this test to see what happens. The good thing about the Chuk is, uh, also the locking. So you can turn on locking with the uh, standard uh, Spring Boot functionality. Here we set the lock level of our joke to debug. And debug means it will print out uh, the generated SQL statement. And in contrast to Hibernate, where you have a, to add an additional uh, locker that you can see the bind variables, uh, joke will inline that. So here we have joke that is started. And first it will uh, or it will execute the, the SQL statement. Here we don't have any bind variables. That's why we only see one uh, statement. And we have kind of a sample of the data that is returned. So you immediately see in the log file if uh, the SQL statement that you execute um, is what you uh, expect uh, in to return. So this table will be generated from Chuk. And here we also see that Chuk by default uses. Uh, Quotes. Um, using quotes with databases means that uh, the names will be case sensitive. Uh, this depends what you want to achieve. Usually databases are not case sensitive, but if you use quotes, then it will be case sensitive. That means you could even create like a column ID, once with all uppercase and one with all lowercase, and this will be two different columns, depending on the database. Not every database has uh, case sensitivity uh, the same way, but that's something that you can configure. So you can configure Juke, for example, to not quote, to always use lowercase, um, to not prefix uh, the column names, for example. There are various configuration that you can turn on to uh, fit the need of your database or your database administrator uh, may tell you how you should uh, execute the SQL statement. So that's the most simple query. And if we uh, go ahead, we want to insert data. And uh, here we have one idea uh, how we could, insert, could do that. So um, here we have a direct insert into so that's a standard SQL statement where we have to define the columns. By the way, the columns are optional in an insert statement, but it's better to uh, define them because the order of the columns could be changed uh, and then your insert statements will no longer uh, work. So here we have Sonai Richard Ross. She was a very famous um, athlete in uh, 2005, I think. And uh, here we can uh, use the insert statement and execute it. And then we get back the number of uh, changed or inserted rows. So that's straightforward. 
What we also can do with insert statements, we can return something. So there is this insert uh, returning uh, statement in many databases. And here we want to get back the ID of the athlete because the uh, sequence is used as a default value in the database definition. And so we can immediately get back uh, the ID. And here we see the first time that we not only can fetch records from a SQL statement with Juk, we can fetch anything. So here I say, please fetch it in a long, because I know that the ID here is long. If I do fetch string, uh, and first of all, I will have uh, to replace that. And secondly, this will not uh, work anymore because Atlet will return along. So that's one way uh, how to do insert statements. Usually I don't use that. I use the updatable record way. And this means I create uh, an athlete record here. So I create Muchinga. By the way, Muchinga is currently the fastest woman in Switzerland. She, she just won a gold medal in indoors, uh, 60 meters uh, sprint. And uh, here, see, it's like filling up a JP entity. You just create the record, set all the fields, and then uh, you have to attach it to uh, Juke. So that means like if you're calling entity manager persist, that's more or less the same. You say, hey, Juke, here is my uh, record. Please take care of it. And if you execute store, it will create an insert statement. So we can run this here as well and have a look uh, what, what happens. And here we see that it, uh, where are we? Exactly. Here we see that it creates an insert and it returns the ID. So I want to get back the ID, and Chuk is taking care that after the insert, the ID is there. Now I'm using an H2 database. And before I was talking about insert returning, and H2 is not able to do that. That's So that's kind of a uh, workaround from Chuk. And Chuk is database agnostic, as I told you. So you don't have to care if this returning is existing or not. And here we have the ID back after uh, the insert. And here we also see the bind variable. So the first statement that we see here in the logs is finally the statement that is executed against the database. And the second statement is uh, just for logging purposes where Juke um, inlines the bind variables. So that's not executed here. Juke always executes prepared statements. So that means you're also preventing from uh, SQL injection. So one of the security risks that you have if you're using SQL, Juke will take care of that as well because it will use uh, prepared statements for that. But inlining, uh, the variables is very handy because you can go ahead and just copy SQL statement to a SQL editor and execute it and tune it and then uh, see what happens. Otherwise, it's uh, quite uh, uncomfortable to use uh, it with the bind variables. So, uh, Simon, we got a question here in this okay. context. I'll interject. So, Sri is asking, so using Juke, we don't have to worry about creating DTOs. Is that... Is that correct? No, that's not correct. We will see like in the okay. next. Uh, and then there was a, a follow-up question. Uh, how does cascading work? Is that something you'll also cover? Yeah, there's no cascading. So if you're coming from uh, JPA Hibernate, you usually map a graph of objects. And then you have like one-to-one -one or one-to-many relationships. And uh, you can define uh, cascading and say, OK, I want to store, like, if we, we look at our model, we will have, like, the club, and the club has athletes. And if we store the club, the athletes will be stored as well. That doesn't happen here. So we are on the database level. So database uh, has no cascading, or Chuk has no cascading. You for sure can define cascading in a database. So you could have a cascade 
on delete, for example. So if you delete the club, all the clits will delete it, for example. But that's a functionality of the database and not of Juke. So Juke has no um, cascading. Because if you have a look at the athlete record here, we just have the table record. So that means we have the ID, we have the first, the last name, uh, we have the gender, the birthday, date and the club ID and the organization ID, but we don't have a relationship to organization or to club. So these are just the foreign keys. And this is not needed because we work differently. So we work on the SQL level and not off on the um, on the nested elements or nested objects level. But we will see with my application that this is often even not necessary. Yeah? Okay. Perfect. Thanks. So to answer the other question about projection, here we have one. Um, sorry, here we have one test for it. So what I want to select this time is something different. I want to have the first name, the last name, and the name of the club of an athlete, for example. And just to get that back in a nicely uh, Java class, I could uh, use the new record feature here from Java and let Juke generate uh, or Juke map the results into this record. And this is very easy. So I can do a select from the first name, last name, club name, from the athlete, join the club, and finally fetch uh, into uh, this athlete ETO. And Juke will check if it's able to map the result into this, this athlete DTO class. And there are various ways how Juke will do that. In that case, it's a record, so it will use the constructor for sure, but it could also use uh, setters, for example, depending on, on what you're doing. But what's very important here, if I remove uh, the last name, um, it will create like uh, an empty uh, club here at the end. Or if I change the field like this, uh, there will be uh, no possibility to, to map the data. And even without having DTOs, so it depends if you really want uh, to have the DTOs, I can change that and just call fetch and see what Juke will return. So as you can see now, the code does not compile because uh, obviously, the result is no longer a list of athlete details. So let's uh, check what the result will be. So the result this time is a record three. A record three is a type from Chook. Chook has record one until I don't know record 50 or 60. I can't tell, never checked. But the record is typed. That means uh, the record has a string, uh, is of type string, string, string. And here, if I go ahead and change the ID to the ID, it no longer will compile because the ID is of type long. So the compiler helps me to prevent from errors. And now, in my opinion, it's a matter of taste if you use this record three directly, if you want to display it, for example, in a Vadin grid, or if you prefer um, to have the other way, if you prefer to have uh, DTOs. Juke has another fantastic feature. We will have a look at that in a minute. It has also the possibility to map nested records. So I could have a nest record with athlete with a club inside, for example, and this will be used uh, by Juke. I will show you that because uh, I don't, I can't show you uh, this feature with um, with H two. Now something that uh, maybe looks not so nice is the join uh, from club to athlete, because this is a two-one relationship. And before we had the question about the cascading, something that Juke knows is implicit join. So an implicit join may, means I don't have to write the join clause by myself. Juke generates um, like a method for each two-one relationship. So I can directly, navigate from athlete uh, to club, and then I can use the name. So these two statements are the same. One is with an explicit join here on top, and this athlete club here 
uh, in the lower example is a uh, implicit join. So that's kind of a syntax sugar. That's I don't know when Juke added this feature, maybe two versions ago, um, just because it's easy to generate. So Juke has enough information about the database model that it can can generate that kind. But this does not exist for one to many relationships. And finally, if we uh, want to finish uh, the SQL, we also have a delete from. By the way, we also have an update. Uh, so we could write direct update statements for sure. And here I have an example with, with delete from. So that's a short introduction to Juke. And now I'd like to show you how this could be used together with Vadin. So let's go back to our application. And uh, because I already thought about, uh, maybe we should have a look at uh, one of the features, and this feature is the nested um, record or multi-select um, feature. If I look at the ranking list here, we see th that the ranking list is a tree. Means the Wettkampf Rangliste, that means competition ranking list. So that's the top class or the top element. Then we have A, B, C that are categories. Here we have the boys from until uh, year 2005. Um, then we have the participants. By the way, that's my son, Lucas, here in the first category. And below that, we have the results of the different events. So we had 80 meters, we have long jump, we have shot put as, uh, as events. And we have the result, so 12 seconds and 12, and the number in the brackets, that's the points that are uh, calculated for, for that. And finally, we get uh, a total uh, point. And in that case, I can create this ranking list with just one SQL statement because of Chook. And maybe we have a look at that first. This is... Uh, in my opinion, quite an impressive feature because you even don't have that with Hibernate. Because Hibernate, you have nested objects, you have uh, graphs that you can fetch, but you know, maybe it will generate an N plus one select problem or you it will generate a Cartesian product. Chook will not do that. So if you have a look at the ranking service, then we see here this, uh, SQL statement, it's quite long, but it reflects uh, the ranking list that we we uh, looked at it before. So we have a competition name, we have a competition date, and then the magic multi-select is here. By the way, the SQL uh, standardization team is currently talking about how to return nested structures with SQL. So in one of the next SQL uh, standard releases, we will also see something like that. But that's not uh, current in the standard, that's just Juke. So we have a multi-set, and the multi-set means we have a nested select here with the category. Then we have a nested uh, select with the athlete. And then finally, we have a nested select with the results. And in every multi-set step, we have a convert from, that means we tell Juke what he should do, and in that case, he should just map it to a result, uh, then the athlete, the category, and finally, the ranking data. And the ranking data is, is a record with nested records. So we have this uh, exactly the same tree structure as we had uh, in the ranking list. Now the question is, how can Juke do that? Juke uses a feature that most of the databases have implemented in the last few years. So SQL databases, most of them have uh, JSON capabilities. That means you can write JSON in the database, but you also can read JSON from the database. And here, Juke behind the scenes, when he sees such a multi-select or a multi-set select, nested select uh, structures, uh, Juke will generate um, a SQL statement that uses the JSON functionality. And I don't think that I have, uh, no, I don't have Tornado. 
So I can't show it to you, but it uses uh, JSON functionality. And this is a great feature in my opinion, because if you have like a REST API, you often have this nested structure that you want to return and you can do that directly from SQL. Yeah? So you don't have to use uh, MapStruct like because most of the, the projects I see, they use uh, Hibernate uh, queries, return entities, and then map these entities directly to DTOs, but that's just something unnecessary. It would even be unnecessary with Hibernate because you could use, use exact same uh, JSON functionality from the database and directly return a JSON string. That's often not the best way because maybe you want to manipulate the data that you return from the database. And in that case, it's probably better um, to fill in uh, like a record structure or a DTO structure uh, directly from Juke. So it uh, reduces uh, the amount of work that you have to do because you don't have to configure a mapper. You just have to uh, write the SQL statement and tell uh, which types should be uh, filled with the data that is returned from the database. Now that's uh, the only part where I even use nested structures. So the question before with this cascading and stuff, if you have a look at the data, uh, or uh, at the application, then you will see we don't need that. So here we have uh, like uh, the dashboard that's public visible, but if you go, uh, or if you're logged in, you can go to, um, oops, uh, you can go to, to the protected um, part. So we have here the series and we can, uh, for example, edit the clubs. And here we have a typical data heavy application. So it usually shows data like in, in, a, in a grid. You can click on the grid, you can change the data, you can save it. And here we, you don't need any nested structure, even not if you have a look at the athletes. So here we can like filter data and we also can edit data. But here we have like, the relationship to the club. But here we don't set the club in the application. We just need the foreign key of the club. And behind the scenes here, in that case, I use a Vadin binder um, that uh, binds directly the athlete record. So I fetch the athlete record displayed in the database table and finally um, use it to edit. So we can have a look at that, for example, that we see how I use it together with uh, with Vadin. So we have the view here. And for example, we have the athlete view. And uh, here we have uh, the athlete record. That's what I told you before. So we have a grid. I use uh, add column from the Vadin grid and uh, use get last name, first name, gender, year of birth. Um, and finally, um, I use like, um, a column for the club ID. And here I don't navigate to the club because the athlete record just has the club ID. I have a map where I prefetch all the clubs and then I get it uh, and to just for uh, the display. And the dialog uh, also uses uh, the record. So we have here a binder. We don't see the binder because the binder is here. Uh, it's a generic edit dialog component because all the edit dialogs are looking and behaving more or less the same. So we have a binder. The binder in that case uh, is of type, uh, uh, sorry, is of type uh, club record, uh, athlete record. Here we see it. And then we have a form with the last name, the first name uh, and so on. And here we have uh, like the binding and we bind to uh, the athlete record directly. Now, uh, here I use a validator with this not empty validator. Uh, I told you before that I also could generate uh, bean validation annotations. So if I would do that, the bean validation annotations would be in the record and I could use the bean validation um, mechanism or the bean validation binder of Vadin that will then check uh, here if it's not empty or not because uh, the last name has a non-null constraint or not null uh, constraint on the database and will result in a non-null or not null bean validation constraint. 
So that's how it works. Exactly. So that's how I use Juke. Um, something that uh, is a bit different from the sample project here is the generation of uh, the Juke code. Because I was telling you that I use test containers usually, and uh, that's what I do here in the main build as well. So if we go down to the build, we see that there are uh, a few plugins configured. The first uh, looks a bit like a hack because I'm using the Groovy Maven plugin um, and start with Groovy a Postgres SQL container um, to use later on for uh, the migration. So here Postgres container started, uh, then the username and password is, is configured. Uh, and finally, I get uh, the DP JDBC URL from the started Postgres container and set it to a property called DP URL. So that's the first step. And the second step that I do, I apply the Flyway Maven, or I use the Flyway Maven plugin to apply the Flyway migrations. And here I use the generated DP URL from test containers. And finally, I use uh, Juke CodeGen Maven plugin to generate the code. So that looks really like an ugly hack. And we were talking uh, with Lucas Sede. Lucas Sede, by the way, is uh, the man behind Juke. He uh, invented the uh, Juke like, I would say, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. And uh, we asked him to add Flyway support and test containers support to Juke. And he told us, no, that's not a good idea because there are other tools. So uh, you may not want to use test containers or you may not want to use Flyway, but Likibase. So we have a variety of tools that you can use in combination. And uh, I think last week uh, I found on Twitter a post uh, from Lucas that someone created a plugin that integrates uh, Juke, Flyway, and uh, test containers. So in fact, I would only need to have one plugin configured and not the whole stuff that I do here. But this is not a bad setup. You will also find the same setup in, in the Juke um, block uh, with, with the same ID and this works pretty well. So I, if I do the build here, I can uh, run it uh, to show how it works. So First of all, it starts a uh, test container, as you can see. And then it applies the flyway migrations, finally generates uh, the Juke code, and then it compiles my code. Something that I completely missed to talk about is what happens if I change the database schema. So for example, if we have a look at uh, this initial uh, script here, and uh, I would say, for example, the gender is not a char, but the gender could be like a number. Let's have it an int instead of a character. And now if I go ahead and compile my code, Then it still success, succeeds because I didn't use, uh, obviously, uh, the gender. So it was a bad example. But it will change the generated code. So that means if we have a look at the generated table, we see now that the gender has another type. It has an integer type. Before it was a string. Now it is an integer. And this gives us the type safety. That means if you change the database model, or the database schema and regenerate Juke, then it uh, may be that your code no longer compiles. And that's a big difference compared uh, to Spring Database Data JDBC or to Hibernate if you use native SQL statements, for example. This will only be checked at runtime. 
So that means if you have SQL statements and use Druk like I do, you may not need to write the test. For sure, you need to write the test to see if you get the data back from the database that you expect, but you don't have to write tests just to check if your SQL statements are correct because you can't write wrong SQL statements. And that's, in my opinion, the best part about Druk. And if you talk about native queries, you could also use Juke in combination with Hibernate if you like to. So this it doesn't mean if you use Juke that you have to decide between Juke and Hibernate. If you prefer Hibernate, for example, for writing data, so if you like the nested structure, you like this um, behavior of cascading, then you could use Juke with entities, uh, not Juke with entities, Hibernate with entities, and write all the queries with Juke and finally execute the native query that also will return entities and not Juke records, by the way. So you can also have a combination of both. In my case, where with my application, I really don't need that. And I write a lot of uh, these um, locking applications because these are classical business applications. I told you about the migration about uh, from Oracle Forms to, to um, Vadin, and there we have uh, an Oracle database and ERP system. So we have around uh, 2,000 database tables. We have 800 uh, forms. That means 800 uh, views in view in uh, in Vadin terms, and we have like 800 2,000 tables that we show to the user. And this is always the same. And there we don't need, really don't need nested structures. Maybe a couple of questions here while you still have your code open. And I think we're in a good spot here. So we got one question on how would you use a Juke if you have a VOD in data provider? Could you kind of hook it up to mm -hmm. populate a grid? Sure. Um, the data provider is, is a perfect fit for Juke because uh, usually you will have either just one fetch callback or you may have a fetch callback and a um, count callback. And if you look at uh, this one, I have to go up. Ah, that's a bit, yeah, that's a bit sad. The point is I have, and that's also a good thing, um, using data providers in combination with tables can be uh, made quite generically because um, it's always the same. So you have like uh, a data structure you get back and you have a grid and you have like sorting and filtering. And uh, now I have to find an example because here we will not see that, I think, because this is all more or less generic, but I can do an example, let's have. A look at that here, we don't see it. That's also a serious list. But if you have a grid, you can uh, create the, the set items method. And here we can take, for example, the fetch callback. And uh, then you have, then you receive the query. So we can go ahead and say, for example, select, uh, let's say from, in that case, we take the athlete. And then we could have a wear clause, for example, based on the filter. But what's interesting is not uh, the wear clause, it's more the offset and limit, because we from the query, we get the offset and we get the limit, and we can directly uh, use that right here and then do a fetch of the data like that. Huh? So we have to return that. Now the question is, it doesn't match because the grid has probably another type. Let's move it to the correct class, not get the relation error. No, it's the same because well, it's Yeah, I think that's a, probably still gives us a pretty good idea of how that yeah. works. We're about five minutes left on the webinar here to stay on schedule. So I'll, we have two more questions that I think we can mm -hmm. probably fit in here uh, well. So one was on 
doing joins. So if you're using Postgres, can you use uh, join using columns as opposed to uh, using join on? That was a question from Osmani. Yes, you can do a lot. You, you can all, even use a natural join where uh, the same um, columns are compared. That's also possible. So we have a variety of way how to, to use joins. So if you have a look at the other project here, by the way, I said that it's still compiles. That's not true. Here is he uh, that the test does not compile, yeah. the code compiles, but the test do not no longer compile. But if you have the join here, uh, where we had the join, let's see, projection, here you, you can also use using, right? So that's all possible. So Juke more or less covers every database specific language feature, by the way. So I would say Lucas said who created Juke and uh, his team are probably the people that know all the database products the best. So I don't think that anybody else knows about all the products or database products because Juke supports more or less every SQL database that you can have. And so it's uh, it's quite uh, sophisticated and also uh, feature rich because every uh, SQL um, database release that brings new features will be integrated also in Juke. All right. Then there was one question on like, do you need to use test containers uh, to use Juke? And I guess this was not something that you actually are required to use, but something that you just prefer to use in your specific yeah, application absolutely here. Absolutely not. So, for example, with with ERP migration project, we can't use test containers because the database is simply too big, to or it's too complicated to put it in a test container. And there we have something like a reference database. And we generate the, the Juke code from the reference database. All right. And we will do one last question, I think, here, and then we'll be on track to finish on time. So uh, in comparison to Hibernate, what are the caching mechanisms here? There are none. Because Juke doesn't that? care about caching. Juke just um, uses standard JDBC to execute the SQL statements, and there's no caching. For sure, on, on the database, you also have caching, you know? So like Juke uses prepared statements, also already the database can cache a lot of uh, of things. But if you use it in combination with Spring Boot, you can create like a repository and then use uh, Juke in the repository and you cache, can cache the repository methods. So it, Juke doesn't have any uh, cache functionality. All right. Well, thank you, Simon. I will take over here for the last slide, if that's okay. And while I'm doing that, maybe you can, I remember you mentioned you were going to be at a few conferences, uh, doing both workshops and talks on the topic. So maybe you can quickly mention where people can find you both in person and online. Yes, I will be in Barcelona in, in uh, May, I think. And there will be a Juke workshop. Uh, Spring at IO conference day at Spring IO, and I will also have a Juke talk at Spring IO at the conference, and uh, then in June at, I will be at JCon conference in Cologne, Cologne, and we'll also talk about Juke. So without waiting, just about Juke. Good, yeah, and we have a uh, Richard who organizes JCon was online here, and he shared a link with the attendees of today's webinar. So five quickest people to click on the link we add in the email after this will can get a free ticket to the JCon conference and come and meet us in person. I will be there as well. All right, so that is it for our webinar this time. Thank you so much, Simon, for joining us. I think it was really interesting to kind of see Duke in person, kind of hands on. I've kind of explored it from a distance, but actually seeing it being used in real world situations really opened up kind of the possibilities in my mind for how I might use this in applications. So thank you for that. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you. And thanks everyone for joining us. We will be sharing the recording afterwards and you'll also get the, the slides, All right? So that's it. Thanks everyone for joining and I will see you in the next one. Bye now. Bye bye.